Okay, folks, it is six o'clock this morning, and um, I'm going to do a little video for you um, about resistance and ohms. And this is just one of a few things we haven't talked about yet in uh, electricity. So the first thing I want to let you know is that um, an ohm is basically when you're transmitting electricity from one place to another place. So when you're transmitting that power and you're trans it's, it's the, as the electrons flow, it's the amperage flowing. Um, as one amp flows from one point to another point, you're using up one watt of power. Okay. That's an ohm. So an ohm is the measure of the resistance to those electrons flowing. So in one watt is the, is the, um, the way we measure watts is amps times volts. So, um, basically it's one amp and one volt. Um, well now, yeah, it's whatever the voltage is, you're losing a little bit of amperage. You generally don't have the voltage come down unless you really have a huge resistance you have you start to have a difference in the amperage so that's why i think you might remember we used a um a picture of a pipe with a little guy named amperage amp trying to go through the pipe there was a guy named ohm that had a, the pipe restricted and there was a guy named volt that was trying to push the um the amp through the pipe so that's that's the basic idea. So today we're talking about ohms or the resistance to the movement of electrons. So like I said, resistance uses up power and um, or it restricts the power as electrons flow through. So it like restricts the flow of electrons. It makes it harder for electrons to go through the wire or go through the circuit whatever they're they're going through so on my screen I have two different um, circuits here they're both identical in a sense what they're not identical in is that one of these has a light bulb and that light bulb is right now set at 10 ohms resistance so that light bulb is using up um, uh, a certain number of amps for the the power to flow through here it's it's resisting the ability of electrons to just flow through if i reduce it if you watch the electrons that are flowing if i reduce the ohms they flow more freely okay so i'm going to put it back at 10. now you see over on the other side i have a resistor here and that's also set at 10 ohms so what is the difference between these two? The main difference is the light bulb is made of a material. Usually it's made of tungsten um, that is designed specifically to give off light. So when it resists the movement of electrons, it's almost like a friction that happens where electrons are trying to get through the tungsten and it causes the tungsten to become bright with light. Now, it also causes a lot of heat and incandescent lights, um, but the main function there is for it to produce light. So it produces light and it produces heat. On the other side, the resistor um, is not producing nearly as, it produces some heat, but um, and it's not producing any light. But the main purpose of the way the resistor is made is so that it doesn't produce nearly as much light and heat, but it also still resists the movement of electrons. Okay. So here's a few different other examples of things that resist the movement of electrons. So you have light bulbs, which produces light. Um, you could have wires. So like in your toaster, if you, um, I have a little video I'm going to put up, I think, so I have the light kind of low in here. You can see my, ugh, my toaster's got junk on it, crumbs and stuff. But I'm going to turn it on, and you'll see the nichrome wires inside there light up. And it's causing 
uh, heat, whew, it's hot. And it's the resistance in the wire. It's the resistance of allowing electrons to move through that uh, causes it to heat up like that. Um, they've been used to control things like the fan on my um, blower motor of the car. Like when I'm, I've got the heater of the car um, there and you have the different settings you can set the heater on. Well, um, let's say I... Uh, your heater of your car, you put it on high. And so you're, you're, um, you want it, the fan to go fast. I don't have a fan up here. So let's say you set it on high. So you want it to go fast, which is the equivalent of having the light bulb produce a lot of heat. So you go, okay, I'm going to put it all the way down here to two. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. I got to come over here, put this all the way down at say two or one. So now look how fast that's going. So my fan would be blowing really fast. My blower would be blowing a lot of air out, or this, in this case, the light is producing a lot of light. But let's say I move it to a lower setting because I don't want that much air blowing on me at that time. So I'll, I move it to like a five, four, let's say. So move it to four and see how it reduces the flow here. So on a blower motor, that air that was coming out all of a sudden now is reduced because I'm using a resistor to put a less electricity through the fan. Okay. Now I can actually change that. Let's say I do it to a lower setting or a lower setting. So the weird thing is on the blower motor of, of my car, the higher my setting, like let's say I have it on set on high, the lower my resistance and the lower the setting, the higher my resistance, so it slows it down. Does that make sense? So I set the fan on high. I have very little resistance, so I put as much electricity through as I can. I set the fan on low, and I have a much lower resistance. I mean, I have a much higher resistance, so I have less electricity flowing. <clears throat> the, that same thing used to be used on cars to control the windshield wipers before we had delayed wipers and all that stuff. I had a car that only had two settings high and low. So if I put it on high, I would not flow the electricity through a resistor and it would be like the, the uh, circuit on the left here and the wipers would just go like crazy. And then if I set it on low, it would go through a resistor and then the wipers would slow down and go like normal. So basically um, you were just using up electricity to go to force it through that resistor, but it was a way for us to control um, that electricity. The same thing is true even with this fan, this this blower right here. There's two, I don't know if you can see, there's two fan settings. Right now it's on one, so it is going through a resistor to slow down the fan, and I can put it on two if I want to as well. Uh, might not even be working anymore. Used to have two fan settings. Maybe my resistor burned out. So anyways, the other thing I can do is um, you could use a resistor to, to make the uh, heating element hotter or not as hot by sending less uh, power through there. Um, some of the other things you can re use resistors for, um, we blew up a lot of LED bulbs because they're very sensitive to how much uh, voltage you send across them and how many amps, how many watts basically you send across them. Um, you can put uh, resistors in line to slow down the electricity so that if you have an LED bulb, uh, for instance, that or anything that's very sensitive to the amount of electricity you have going through there, you can protect it. Um, generally, um, things like computers, and other electronics will have lots of resistors in there to uh, to restrict uh, how much um, power is going through there. Um, one thing I, th I think is interesting is if you look at, like right now I'm controlling the resistance of this on the right, that uh, resistor. If I change the settings on that resistor, see how those stripes change on there? 
I'm going to show you in just a minute what those mean. Um, one last thing. So I'm going to put this back. I'm going to put this one back at 10. That's what its standard is. And I've got 0.9 amps. Here's my question. If I take this and let's say I put another resistor in series in here, what is going to happen? See how the resistance has doubled and it's 0.45 amps. So remember when we took a battery and put another battery in series, it doubled the amount of power that we had there. If we take a resistor and we put two resistors in series that are the same, we cut that power in half. Okay. So um, series still works like series, right? So these two in a row, you got to be resisted through here. And then you go with the reduced amount of power and you get resisted through there. So um, the, the electrons still have to flow through both of the resistors. Okay. Um, let me go to here. Here is a um, the, the main resistor you'll probably ever see. It looks kind of like this. Um, and that's called, I have it up here, uh, right there. That's called a through-hole resistor. Here's a few different pictures of them. Um, this is just to show you there's different uh, sizes and types of resistors. Here's one sitting on a quarter. It's a little tiny one. It's not a through-hole. That's a surface mount, it's called. But if you scraped away the um, outer coating of these resistors. Here's what it looks like. So this top one is a 27 ohm resistor. So it's it resists a fair amount. Okay, we were using mainly 10 ohm resistors back here in the diagram. Okay, or the demo. This next one is a 330 ohm resistor, and see how it has more coils in there. That's the main thing. You've got to send those electrons through more resistant material. And then the bottom one is 3.3 million ohms. So there's lots and lots of coils that it has to go through. Um, what does what are these resistors made of? Um, generally, they're made of carbon film that's wrapped around a ceramic substance. So they try to reduce the, the heat generated by doing this and they can control the um, the movement of electrons through there pretty well by how much carbon film is um, wrapped around there. Um, that is that part of it. So that brings us back down to um, you might see variable resistors using rheostats or things like volume control. Um, if you think about it, if you have speakers and um, your, your uh, stereo is producing a certain amount of output, well, really your speaker dial, all it's doing is when you turn it down low, you have a much higher resistance, so it's sending it through more resistance. So your speaker is not getting as much power. And as you turn it higher, it's sending it through less resistance. So your speaker is getting all of the output. So that's that's sort of the idea with these. And then um, the uh, stripes on here, you interpret what the size is and the design of it by the stripes. It tells you, you don't have to, you don't have to know for our purposes what the stripes mean. Just know that there, there's stripes on here. So like if you ever run into a resistor, you're not sure what it is, you can always just Google what the stripes mean and you can figure out real quick um, what the stripes are. There's some examples on this website. If you're interested in it, it's learn.sparkfun.com tutorials resistors. Um, you can see it up here in the, in the um, address. Uh, box. So I think that's basically um, everything. The uh, only thing 
left to do is I've got a few questions under resistors uh, in Google Forms for you um, and should be all set. I will talk to you later. Let me know if you have any questions or any issues with it.